Welcome to episode number 19 of the Chris Rose Rotation, a presentation of John Boy Media. Ooh. Stephen uh, Brawl I, I, of the Pittsburgh okay, so, Pirates, yes. Thank you. I, I've, you know, I've gotten more into watching John Boy Media. I, I watched it before, but I right. didn't watch it as faithfully as I do now. Dude, it is absolutely hilarious. Every single one of his breakdowns is ridiculous, and I love funny. I love every second of it. Yeah. That, that's funny. That's funny. In fact, we're going to get to one um, very quickly here, but it's odd because you're in like some sort of regular homish kind of setup and I'm in a hotel room as I'm finishing up my work at the NFL draft in my hometown of Cleveland, Ohio. Did, so you got in your condo, okay? Yeah, yeah, I moved in my condo. It is, it overlooks a golf course, which is fun to like kind of look at people not doing very well. But here in Bradenton, it's almost like a, it's, this is not a senior community. There oh. are senior communities. But it basically is. I think I'm the youngest person in here in this condo complex by like 30 years. Um, but it's okay. Everybody's really nice. You know, there's a nice pool, you know, community pool. And uh, I'm enjoying it. The Wi-Fi here is great. And I think that's probably the most important thing. So, yeah, I'm good. So when you sit out by the pool, are the um, are there ladies in like their 70s making eye contact with you? Like, hey, what's up, sunny boy? <laughs> you know, I... <laughs> What I've found being here is that with initial contact with people, they're like wary of me because I have all these tattoos and I usually wear a backwards hat. And I think that they at first glance are like, who is this guy in here and why is he here? And then I'm like, hi, I'm Steven. And they're like, oh, OK, he's he's nice. That's that's nice. Um, I have I, I've been working on my my karma. I'm kind of building up good karma, you know, helping old ladies with their groceries and opening doors and stuff like that. So, you know, I'm, I'm trying to just stock up on some karma for, for later. That's good. That's well played. Yeah. What percentage of uh, your fellow tenants have any idea what you do for a living? Uh, zero. As far as I know, I don't think any of them do. We have had guys stay in this complex before. I know that. Um, but I don't think, cause everybody else is gone obviously for the start of the season. So I don't think anybody knows. I think they just think I'm some weirdo that moved uh, down to Bradenton and is at the pool every day at like noon. And it's just like, he probably shouldn't be here at this time if he has a real job. So some people are definitely thinking about it. I know they're talking about it. You know, who is the guy with all the tattoos? Why is he here? You know, I like to think I'm part of the rumors. How are you doing emotionally these days? Because I know we're now a month into the season and you're hurt. Yeah, uh, I would say I'm, I'm doing pretty well. I, you know, the recovery is going pretty well and, and I've, I'm getting stronger and, you know, all that stuff is, is progressing. I did just have my birthday two days ago. I turned no, 29. Right. Happy yeah, I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you. No, it's OK. Um, you did text me on the day, so it's all good. Um, but my, so my mom didn't want me to be alone for my birthday because she's my mom and she's the sweetest woman on the planet. So she's actually here right now. She's what? she's staying till tomorrow. Yeah. Do you want to say hi? Absolutely. All right. I'll, I'll text her cause she just went outside. So I don't think I'd be able to, uh, to communicate with her, but I will definitely, I told her you might want to say hi. So oh, she knows God. she's aware. I know, yeah. but yeah. she's great. She, she cooked spaghetti and sausage last night and, and cake. We all, my family always has yellow cake with tr chocolate frosting for, okay. for our birthday cake always. And so, um, yeah, she made it last night and she's, way, it's just been great. What a good mom to fly all the way across the country. Cause she still lives in San Diego. It's not yeah, like yeah. San Diego to Bradenton, Florida is like, you know, it's not like taking an Uber there. You know, no, really no, it was, it was quite a, and it was quite an ordeal too. She got delayed on both flights. So she got delayed on the first flight and then missed her connecting flight. So it ended mm -hmm. up being like a crazy long day of traveling. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, she's, she's hanging out. She's, she was a, a stay at home mom forever and all four of us are gone now. So she does uh, payroll for my dad's company. But other than that, you know, there's a lot of hanging out, talking to grandkids, talking to us when, when, uh, when we're available, all that kind of stuff. So I don't, she might not have her phone on her, but she'll come in at some point. I, I promise you. And it might interrupt whatever we're talking about, but she's my mom so that she gets, you know, priority. Absolutely. We will stop. We will stop because in a few <laughs> minutes, we're going to be joined by one of your best friends. You have to explain who this is that we're going to be chatting with. Yeah. Okay. So this guy's name is John Toscus. 
John, I met in college. Uh, we are the same year. We both went to Regis University starting 2013, or sorry, 2010 to 11 that year. Um, and, you know, our freshman year, we were friends, but not like super close. And then our sophomore year, we actually lived in the same house with a few other baseball players and just, you know, became best friends. And he's the only person that has ever made the jump from my baseball friends to my nerd friends. Cause I had like the two separate friend groups in college. And, uh, and there was one day John and I were, were playing video games or something. I was like, you know what? I feel like you should really meet my other friends here. I think you'd really get along with them. And then of course, you know, since he still lived in Colorado for years, he became way better friends with them than I, you know, than I was. And, um, but you know, he's a great dude. He's hilarious. He's got, he loves baseball so much. Uh, we played together for a few years um, and he actually just moved to North Carolina, got married. Uh, and so now he's, uh, I don't even know. He, I don't even know what he does. He like, he, we'll he's find a beer out. guy. Yeah. Good. Yeah, exactly. It'll be great. Okay. So before um, he joins us today, I do want to hit you up on a few things. Uh, one of the more interesting things we saw was um, Phillies and Cardinals. And first of all, Bryce Harper got hit in the face and then yeah. DD Gregorius takes it in the ribs and it was just an ugly scene all around. I guess let's start with the Harper thing. Yeah. Have you I ever, mean, okay. You, you take it wherever you want. I, I want to hear it. Yeah. Okay. So I've never, I've never hit anybody in the face. I've gotten pretty close. Like I said, I like throwing hot up and in my mom's coming. Um, but like seeing it like, Hey mom, let, this is, this is perfect. Come here. If you saw me get hit in the face, like Bryce Harper did, what would you think? I don't know. I'd be scared. <laughs> I wouldn't yeah. run down on the field though. And I would uh, come and see you after the game. <laughs> oh, that's, that's really nice. And professional of you. Uh, Chris, this is my mom, Amy. Hi, Hi nice Amy. To meet you. Yes. Same here. I, I've communicated with your parents via email. Yeah. I've communicated, you know, via email with you guys. That's so right. Far. I sent you pictures. Yeah. Yes. So thank you so much. And you are the sweetest mom to fly all the way to Bradenton, Florida to go hang out with your son, on his 29th birthday on the 29th of April. That was, that was, that's cool. Two thumbs up. Yeah, Mom. It's a nice uh, vacation, but I was worried about him being all by himself down here. So <laughs> well, we're keeping our eye on him. And by the way, everybody loves him on the podcast and they all think he's so cute and adorable and Aww. funny and talented and all this. So, so you did a great, great job raising. Thank him. you. I had a little right? help, but I'll, but we did a no, great no, job. Take the mom, take <laughs> the credit. Take she, the yeah, credit. she's she's too humble. Um, but yeah, anyway, thanks, mom. Thank you. Love you. Love you. Okay, Aww. bye. That's sweet. Um, anyway, yeah. So I have three older brothers that are all very diverse in their own stuff, too. So my parents are very proud. And they don't really care about me anymore because now there's grandbabies. So you know, <laughs> it's just kind of sec I'm secondary now. It's fine. Um, anyway, okay, so Bryce Harper getting hit in the face. Yeah, that's that's uh, I mean, that's scary. I mean, that's a very hard fastball hitting you square in the nose. I mean, he wore it like a champ walking off the field and everything. Um, but you know, hitting the guy after, you know, hitting Gregorius afterwards and, and then it coming out basically saying like, Hey, um, this guy shouldn't be pitching, right. If you can't, if you can't throw strikes. Okay. And I've actually experienced that once before. Um, and I, and I, I hate to always have to throw glass under the bus, but I have to because glass hit two people in the head in one of his first starts in 16, I believe it was either 16 or early 17. Um, and I, it was either against the Phillies or it was against the Cardinals and the manager came out after the game and basically said like, he shouldn't be in the big leagues if he can't control. And if it puts my players in danger and like, I can't imagine having to hear that and, you know, and kind of work through that mentally. Cause that would be really tough. Um, but like, dude, it sucks. But, you know, Harper texting him afterwards and basically saying like, Hey, I know it's an accident and he didn't do it on purpose. Like that's, it's a super professional move and, and it's good to see. And I like that baseball is going that way instead of like, all right, he hit me in the face and he had our best player in the face. So now we're going to hit one of his players in the head. You know what I mean? Um, so I think that's a good sign and good on Harper for, for taking the high road. And you know, it's an accident. You know, the guy's not trying to hit you in the face. Um, it, yeah, I mean, it's, I think it was handled about as well as it possibly could have, but man, that's, it's scary. It's scary to watch. I, I saw it. I was watching the pirates game 
and uh and they showed it you know like mid game right when it happened and uh you just don't see it very much and you hope to see it as little as possible so hopefully no more people get hit in the face have you ever had a, an opposing manager talk to you? Because I can—I mean, I understand what Joe Girardi was doing. Like, I get it. Like, he doesn't—he can't have one of the best players in the league take it in the grill, and then his starting shortstop, who's a damn good player, take it without. Because if he doesn't pop out there, then the other guys in the roster probably look at him like, "Do you not give a shit about us? Like, is was he in a tough spot, or should he not point it at the pitcher and talk? Yeah, all that sort of stuff." I, I'm okay with it. I think it shows, you know, you're the manager, you're protecting your team. You're pissed that your best players are getting hit. I think you'd be pissed no matter what, if this guy's hitting people in the face, you know, and yelling at the pitcher saying something like control the fucking ball, um, I think is totally okay. I don't, I don't see anything wrong with it at all. Uh, like you said, I think it's protection and I think that's necessary but also, and, and knowing that it's an accident doesn't change the fact that it happened and that it needs to be addressed. So um, I'm, t- I'm, I'm definitely cool with it. That's what a manager's supposed to do, I think. Okay, fair enough. I Did mean, you, do, uh, do you disagree with me? I mean, I understand why Schilt was pissed. Like, Joe, don't go talk to my players. Like, don't talk to my players. Like, if you want to go out and protect your. I don't know. I, I like it because I like the drama in baseball, <laughs> but I just don't know how I would handle it. Like if I were that, if that, I were that kid's father, Cabrera, that was on the mound, I'd be like, don't talk to my kid. Like let <laughs> my manager talk to my kid. You stay yeah. out of it. You know, you want to go bitch at the umpires. If you want to eject it, you want to, I get it. The other part of the equation is that the Phillies pitchers now have a warning on them, even though yeah. they how do you deal with that as a pitcher when you and your team hasn't done anything wrong? Doesn't that take away what you're trying to do game plan wise? It can. Yeah. The, the double warning thing, I get it. It's kind of like, you know, the rule when you're in school, uh, it doesn't matter who started the fight. You, you both get in trouble. Right. Yeah. And it's like trying to prevent that from happening. And I, and I get that, but it does make it an issue. If now it becomes very difficult for the umpires where if, I, tr- I'm not, I'm not going to stop throwing inside fastballs because you mm-hmm. can't. And so now if I hit somebody with an inside fastball and I get tossed because of a complete accident, that's not really fair since that guy got to hit two people on accident and you know, nothing happens. So yeah, I, I've always kind of questioned that, but you don't want people hitting people on purpose. So I get it. And there's not really much else you can do. Um, I, dude, I don't know. Like, I, I think that is there's no rule to say if you hit a certain amount of people, then you get ejected from the game, right? It's right. just it's just kind of we have to guess if it was on purpose or not, which once again, we always, we talked about last time, the circle. Everything's a circle. So like you're reading it in the game when what happened before, he hit my guy in the face, so now we have to watch to see if they're going to retaliate. And instead of it just being like, dude, he hit him, he hit two guys, and now you're going to like put a warning on the team who had nothing to do with it. And uh, yeah, I, I don't clearly they were an accident. So why does it matter? I, I don't know. It's weird. Let's move on to funnier stuff like Freddie okay. Freeman facing Anthony Rizzo. <laughs> that might be the moment of the year. It really might oh, yeah. be. Right. Yeah. I, I think it has to be. I mean, just the smiles and just the two of them, like, friends from everything i've heard you know good friends having a good time both great first baseman playing for a while and to see anthony Rizzo strike him out when he was four for four with like two homers that day wasn't he yeah it was ridiculous it's just perfect baseball is so funny and if you're one of the pitchers who gave up a homer to him earlier in the game you're like dude what the hell like that's so dumb like how does he get away with this and he just threw the slowest 61 mile an hour like garbage breaking ball that he swung underneath because it didn't even like break at all. And they're, they're both laughing. I, I think that's great. I think that's hilarious. It takes away from the, from the fact that it was 10 to zero at the time, mm-hmm. you know, and, uh, and it kind of, I think that helps if you're the Cubs and you're losing 10 zero. And then the next day they came back and won. And it's just like, because you kind of erase some of that, that mm-hmm. really bad performance, it kind of, 
at the end of the day, she's like, yeah, I mean, you lose sometimes. And like, look, we got to see Rizzo pitch and that's fun and that's funny. And then it kind of, I think, helps you wash it off too. So I think there's there's a bunch of stuff going on there, but I love it. And I by thought the way, so why can't we just enjoy moments? Like there, I guarantee you there's some hard ass who's like, they just got their butt kicked, the Cubs, and they had a shitty start to the season. They're sitting there laughing. Like, stop. If any, If we've learned anything, from what has happened in the world the last 15 months, it's that you damn well better enjoy the moments where you can laugh and smile because there's enough shit that is, will drive you nuts. Yeah. And, and I mean, there's always going to be those people. And I think it's a, it's a half and half of trolls trying to get responses mm-hmm. and then people who legitimately are just way too serious about this stuff. Um, but I, like I said, I like, it's, it's a good moment. It's a fun moment. Let uh-huh. there, there can be fun moments, even if you're losing, it doesn't have to be the end of the world, especially in a season of 162 games where you're just going to lose a bunch of games. You're going right. to lose at least like, even if you're the best team, you're going to lose at least 55, 60 games. So like, dude, it's going to happen. So I think having some positives comes out, come out of it. Who cares? Like, that's good. I'm with you. Last thing before we get to your buddy, your catcher, Jacob Stallings, got a uh, – did you see his home run the other day? Oh, uh, yeah. Of course, man. How, how would I miss that? So, do – it's not that – it is – it's a home run, I guess. It's definitely a home run. I mean, it's more of a home run than Jose Canseco, the ball bouncing off Canseco's head, True. right? Yeah. I, I – like, watching it, it definitely thought it was an out. I thought it was just a sick catch because it goes in the glove and he closes his glove around it. You know what I mean? And on like the, the angle, you cannot see the ball come out of his glove at mm-hmm. all. And so when he fell down and he like quickly closed his glove, you don't really notice that the ball's not in there because it was in the glove the whole time. But I it was like, Oh my God, he dropped it. Oh my God. It's a home run. And then everybody's happy and excited. And dude, that was almost an absolutely stellar catch. I mean, it basically was a catch, um, but it just, you know, kind of spring loaded out of it when he slapped, you know, when he wrist cocked around the wall. So did you, I mean, you reach out to your catcher where you're like, Hey, nice. And yeah, no, I said, nice Homer. And he said, lol, if they, I, what did he say? If only they were all that easy or something like that. (laughs) And I was like, it was going over the fence, at least, you know, it wasn't like one of those ones where the outfielder helps it out. Cause I've seen those that's, I've seen that happen when they jump back against the wall, you know, and it, yeah. it pops out of their glove when they hit the wall and it goes up and over Dude, that's the worst that happened to Tyone in Arizona. One year Meadows was playing left field and it just, he tried to make a great play and it just popped out of his glove. And it's just like, it goes from nobody you know nobody scoring to like i think it was a three-run homer Ooh. it was just like oh no so i've seen it does meadows like go up to him and be like sorry sorry man <laughs> it's like i don't it's fine <laughs> like, uh, i shouldn't have let it hit so hard you know whatever it's my it's my fault too uh, but yeah i mean it's baseball can be it can be so nice it can it giveth and it taketh away yes, it can All right, you ready to go talk to your buddy? Yeah, yeah. Hey, guys, I want to tell you about dugout mugs. Mine got sent to me not only with the uh, Cleveland logo, but my name on it. So I've got this, I've got the wine mug, and I got the shot glass as well. And it is here just in time because we are now less than a week away from Mother's Day. And so it is a great gift for all the baseball moms out there. I want to use my wife as an example here. We've got two sons, one that is still playing varsity baseball in high school. So if we have a game on a Wednesday, she might use this. Just put some high-quality H2O in this bad boy. But if we have a game on Friday, she might throw a little of her favorite wine in this mug. Or if we have a game on Saturday, she might go with, like, uh, vodka, soda, and a lime in one of these two. But if we really know we're going to kick it and have some fun during the weekend, she might bring this bad boy as well. So you got your choice. And here's the great deal. You get the gift for the baseball mom and you get to use it as well. It is great. So visit dugoutmugs.com. Use the code John Boy to get 35% off the best gifts for all the baseball moms out there. It's going to be a blast, and she will love you even more. Cheers to all the dugout mugs. 
You know, when I was a kid, I loved to eat cereal. But as I got older, it was jam packed with sugar. And so it wait a second. There's a healthy cereal out there that has zero grams of sugar right here. It's Magic Spoon. I ain't kidding. Zero grams of sugar, four net carbs, 13 to 14 grams of protein, only 140 calories per bowl. It's keto friendly. It's gluten free. It's grain free. It's soy free. It's low carb. It's GMO free. And it comes in four fantastic flavors. We got peanut butter. We got cocoa. We got fruity. And we got frosty over there. How good is it? Well, while I was away at the NFL draft, these boxes came for me and my family started dipping into the stash. That's how good it is. So go to magicspoon.com slash rose, order your first pack of four, and you'll get five bucks off if you use the promo code rose. And in fact, this company is so ready to guarantee that it's great out there. Full money back guarantee if you don't like it. But I'm going to tell you, you're going to like it. So it's magicspoon.com slash rose you get five bucks off that first order you and i maybe can share a bowl at some point i'm digging in before my family eats it all hello everybody again and i'm going to introduce you to my friend john john toskis uh say hi john hi john <laughs> nice good one yeah, this is nice um, to go for the rest of time steve i'm gonna make you it, regret never inviting me <laughs> we're about 12 that. seconds in i already regret it yeah <laughs> this is this is okay i'm just gonna start with a perfect example of who john is one time we were at the mcdonald's drive through i mm-hmm. was driving john was in the back seat and i went to get uh, i got fries and john was like hey can i get a fry so doing the thing that you always do i grab a few fries and i just put them over my shoulder and john instead of grabbing them just took his mouth all the way around my fingers and pulled the fries out of my hand. It was disgusting. It was very confusing too, because I couldn't yeah. see it. I don't know. I took a lot of, I uh, still do a lot of pleasure in making you uncomfortable. I thought you were going to talk about the time we went, oh, we went to McDonald's so often in college. <laughs> the time you were driving and you like put the two Cokes like in the cup holders and hang the straws over and you just. Oh. Uh. No, oh, what a no. Oh, horrible time to freeze. But it's a great freeze right now. He's he's killing it. <laughs> what? Well, uh, it's how long is this going to last? He took the straw completely wrapped in paper and slammed it into my drink while it was still wrapped in paper. And this is just little things he did to make sure that my life was a living hell. <laughs> I want to ask you this because I've covered a lot of different sports in my time. Why are baseball players the most immature people? Why is it? I think it's the less physically aggressive sport. Football, hockey, all that stuff, you kind of have to be a mean grown adult to Mm -hmm. survive. But baseball is literally just, what, four hours of goofing off? (laughs) I mean, yeah, most of the time. Yeah, It's people that don't want physical confrontation and don't want to, for the most part, be the biggest, toughest guy in a room and just would rather, like, play darts all night. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, yeah. did you guys were you guys on bus rides at Regis for like eight hours? Is that what it was? We had some short ones, uh, you know, like our in conference was pretty close. But then we had like 14, 15 hour bus rides because oh. we went to New Mexico and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Las that Vegas, New Mexico. Gorgeous. Beautiful Las Vegas, New Mexico. That place was a. am going to say it's a dump. It's not a good place to be. Wait, what not, the hell is Las Vegas, New Mexico? I've never heard of that. You guys making a city, that shit up? No, it's a city in New Mexico called Las Vegas, New oh, Mexico like Highlands hour, College. Like an hour outside. Would Albuquerque be the closest one? It's not even near, it's not even close to Albuquerque. No, I don't think so. It's in the middle of Mexico, in New Mexico. It's right, right on the border of Colorado and New Mexico is El Raton. And then, <laughs> like, and then it's like a couple hours past that. I don't think there's any other noteworthy cities on the way <laughs> no i was so impressed a few episodes ago with you steven that you were like yeah we were the first regis to ever win conference and now you guys are playing in freaking las vegas new mexico and now i understand how you became hey. conference champs well no we because it's the first time we've ever done it they wouldn't normally yeah, it's still the, <laughs> it's still the first time our our school had ever done it okay so it doesn't matter who we're playing yeah uh, actually you know it's funny I don't think in my entire college career we beat um, Mesa, who's now Division One. I'm pretty sure. We're division um, the entire time there. Um, yeah, that's true. 
Um, <laughs> but they, uh, they like, we, the only reason we won is because somebody else beat them in the tournament. So we didn't actually have to play them in the tournament that we won our mm -hmm. conference. So it worked out very well for us. Got it. Okay. Anyway. So uh, I, I looked up John's high school stats. Cause I remember how ridiculous they were when he told me about it. <laughs> so listen to this. So first of all, he's in Colorado and um, uh, what's that place called John? My high the, school city. The city. Uh, Colorado Springs. Colorado Springs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so he only played in 35 years, 35 games in two years. So that's Colorado for you. Yeah. You get um, two months, you get most of April and May to play as many games as you can. Cause mm -hmm. the fields are covered in snow the rest of the time. Right. Yeah. Um, so he hit four or four over those two years. He had uh, 135 plate appearances. He had 44 hits, 46 RBI, 48 runs, 11 doubles, nine homers, four triples. And he had a 1336 OPS. It's pretty good over two years. That'll play. I mean, yeah, I, I, it got me a, I a scholarship to Division II Regis University. So, yeah. <laughs> Colorado Springs isn't exactly a hotbed for baseball talent in general. And I think, you know, most big time schools realize that. I mean, it's essentially the course field effect times a thousand, where it's, you know, high, high atmosphere the bats are ridiculous out of control back then the where they not be the orange the, yeah, comp. the bats they had yeah, to yeah. yeah they had to be canceled because they killed too many kid pitchers <laughs> so <laughs> we were using those at six thousand feet elevation against um you know colorado springs level talent so everybody i mean that year i think my senior year i must have hit 400 and something but wasn't even on like the state like every year they do like a state all-star game at uh -huh. Field, and I wasn't even invited to that. So oh, that sucks. <laughs> but I mean, it's just, I mean, uh, springs, like we would go up to Denver teams, which are twice our size and just get annihilated. And like, that was it. We were a bunch of small fish in a big pond at that point. But so, no. um, so when you, when you got to Regis and you met Steven and he is half pitcher slash outfield stud and half thespian, what was your first thought? Honestly, he would never stood out as like a stud. Like he wasn't on the hill blowing doors down like freshman, sophomore, even junior year. Junior is like when he finally started to touch 90 consistently. But until then, he was just, oh, yeah, he hits and pitches. Like, I mean, essentially everybody I knew playing baseball. I mean, I was like one of the only people I knew that didn't pitch at all. So it was just like, yeah, everybody pitches a little bit. Everybody hits a little bit. He's better than most at both, but no, he was never like in batting practice, hitting balls 500 feet. I mean, I'm sure he had some days where he went four for five or five for five, but he was just always quietly better than everybody else around him. We just like, don't even notice him out there until, you know, again, he has a three for four day. And then also, did you, you did you, I can't remember if you hit while you pitched, you must have. Right? I did, but freshman year I was actually really bad on the mound adjusting to that Colorado um, elevation and I didn't throw hard. I mean, there's a reason I was going division two, you know, I wasn't like a, a huge stud, especially on the mound and I hit for contact. So yeah, it wasn't, it was not flashy at all um, at all, especially freshman year. And then sophomore year, I didn't pitch like at all. So junior, when I finally did start throwing harder and started striking bunch of people out that's when it changed but i i would say i've progressively gotten better like the whole the whole time um but yeah i mean our team was full of just like our team was full of guys who were there to play baseball while they still could and but were there to get an education i mean regis was education first for sure um so like we all i mean it was just a different kind of attitude. Like when we were in the playoffs, I remember one day um, me and John and like two other guys were down in the hotel lobby doing a puzzle, like a jigsaw puzzle on the table in the lobby. We had like three guys uh, do, playing computer games. We had two games of chess going on at the same time. And then like the other, one of the other teams like walked in the hotel lobby and they look over at us like, who the hell are these guys? Like, what are they doing? We're just like, oh. We weren't even the smart guys. I mean, that's still in our conference, the Colorado School of Mines, which is like the leading engineering school in the country. Yeah. They 
kick, kick their ass most of the time. It, well, probably half the time in baseball. And then, but they'd always take the like team GPA award by a landslide. Yeah. Hey, you coached there too after uh, we, after playing, yeah. right? Yeah. For a year. It's funny. Cause you know, we always saw them as like a bunch of dumb nerds. <laughs> just like, dumb and, nerds. Yeah. Oh, total nerds. But like when coaching, I'm just like, Oh, they're literally like every baseball player I've ever met in my life but they just like are into mechanical engineering and petroleum engineering. And just like, oh. <laughs> They're just smarter than us. Just it, there's no question smarter. Yeah, still um, scumbags on and off the field, but right. Wanted to also make, you know, a six figure job after college. Yeah, they actually, I went to a Regis basketball game at school of mines and they were way better than us at basketball. And I don't know if you were there, but for some reason, these like mines players tried to literally fist fight us at the end of the basketball game. Like, well, as we were walking out, they like stood at the top of our level that we were going, uh, we were going to walk out. And I remember the guy punched himself in the head to show how serious he was. And we were just like, dude, what, what is going on right now? Why do you want to fight us? We just watched your basketball team beat our basketball team by 50. Like, I, what is the deal here? Um, so apparently they're also angry, probably had something to do with the fact that it was literally like 82% male population at that school. So they're just always angry. Yeah, Regis was the nursing school. It's the exact opposite. Yeah. Hey, John, <laughs> Good John did, did Stephen ever try and drag you into s- singing events? Or, I mean, because, you know, you could always be with him and got a, a concert will break out all of a sudden. Um, no, the, the baseball team every once in a while would go support him when he did, you know, concerts essentially as his finals for his education. So he would do his concerts where he'd sing uh, something from the Book of Mormon or mm. those are the one that's a big one I remember. But um, no, fresh, freshman or sophomore year, they, our school did a American Idol type event called Ranger Idol. And I got to be a part of that as just like Steve's backup band playing little guitar hero guitars with my friends. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, was, you were the. It's pretty good. I mean, we, we won. So like, I mean, obviously things worked out well, but we were performing, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I got to try to finagle my hair into a mohawk. <laughs> I mean, how much, how much hair gel did you have to use to make your hair stand up? I mean, a ton of hair gel. We also like put like straws in it. Cause I essentially just like, like Liberty spikes it and then like put a straw in it and then, <laughs> like rubber band did. So it's, yeah, I got to play rock star for a day with Steve, and he took it as a sort of semi career. Yeah. 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 Might as well, right? Yeah. Um, okay. So I want to, I want to just talk about. So John is a huge baseball fan, obviously. Yes. Otherwise, we wouldn't have been uh, the best of friends that we are. Um, but I, 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 so I want to ask a few things about this this is this is me running this interview welcome to the Stephen brault podcast rotation so it's not the um, rotation to be the the brault bullpen yeah the brault bullpen look at that the, the brault on the fly yeah there it is the Out brault goes. pen yeah we're <laughs> we gotta call in the brault pen <laughs> he's clever man he's, he's a clever guy um okay so first thing you moved to north carolina recently you've been a lifelong rockies fan you're wearing a broncos hat but you told me the other day you don't like the Rockies anymore, and that kind of oh, surprised uh, me. Denver Bears hat. Oh, jeez. I, I have no idea what that means. <laughs> I don't know. The Denver Bears were – I don't know if they were minor league or just independent baseball in Denver until I think it turned into the Zephyrs, and then that turned into the, the Rockies. But, no, I think it's just a really nice hat and logo. And um, we've talked about this. It's fun being – sort of romantic or nostalgic about 60s and 70s baseball just seemed like more fun back then yeah there's probably, no rules it's probably largely due to the cigarettes and cocaine all the players did but <laughs> it looked like it was more fun <laughs> yeah it did it looked like a lot more fun also uh, that was when like the pirates parrot got busted for selling cocaine like literally while in the costume yep. at events <laughs> that is like that's just hilarious 70s were a weird time man apparently um but apparently. you don't like the rockies anymore so i want to know what's going on it was the arenado thing the, the straw that broke the camel's back i mean 
the Rockies have never been committed to winning. Winning's always been like an accident to them. It's like, yeah, I mean, we have to put a team out there and we're going to, I wouldn't even say do the best we can, but we're going to do our jobs. And every once in a while you stumble into a World Series appearance, but it's like as soon as they hit any sort of success, they don't make any first steps forward. Because the whole, yeah. The, yeah, what you were saying was yeah. really good until it became just a robot uh, <laughs> trying to mimic a human voice uh, and not saying <laughs> words. Um, and, but, okay, so for me, I get it because we talked about that trade and like how confusing it was and how weird it is to see on paper you sign, a, you trade him away and give $50 million. That's just a weird look. You know, I don't really know. But I, I assume as a Rockies fan, that's tough to tough pill to swallow, right? Oh, no, you just don't swallow the pill. You're like, no, done with this. So it's very freeing to just be done with it all. John, yeah. I, I do have a question. Since you were in Colorado for, for so long, were you there the day that our man went deep? Yeah, of course. That was, you know, Stephen Brault Day in Denver, as they put it where we were sitting right behind his folks and I had known them obviously for three years. They somehow made it to every home game at Regis and a lot of games on the road. Um, no, yeah, it was just, you know, from even sitting behind home plate or, you know, up in that section, you didn't realize hey, how many fastballs he threw in a row. And, but no, you knew right off the bat that thing was gone and it was unbelievable. It's funny being, you know, a baseball fan and, I used to be a Rockies fan, but then to like watch Steve pitch, it's like this next level of fandom where, you know, I've never screamed at umpires before on the TV, but when they miss a call, Steve, I'm just like, oh, this asshole. Like, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? <laughs> it's one of the things I have difficulty with now that I've got basically six additional kids. In addition to my two biological children, yeah. I have six from my Chris Rose rotation and I get nervous. I get upset when they don't do well. I can only imagine when it's one of your best friends that is out there, right? Um, I, I hardly ever turn off a baseball game in disgust if somebody's not playing well, but some of Steve's shakier starts are like, yeah, I'm just not going to watch this one. It's just making me angry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you for the support. Um, that that okay. is supporting. It's so I don't watch you and hate you for watching you. It's like, oh, you know what? Steve's not on today. I'm just going to. We're fine. I'm just, I'm just gonna turn this one off. He will. I will get a text from John though after, especially after my bad starts. Uh, something on the lines of, "Hey man, that was uh, really bad." So nice. Um, okay, so I want to tell a story. Stephen, I always blame your defense. Oh, thanks, man. Appreciate it. Um, okay, so 2011. Mine and this is like the second half. Of the it was the end of the season, 2011. So it was the first half of mine and John's sophomore year. We were living together and the Red Sox uh, were up nine games on the Rays and behind the Yankees to start September. So John's a huge Red Sox fan. His dad's from Boston. Oh, okay. um, So John, diehard Red Sox fan, as long as, as well as being a Rockies fan. Well, not anymore. So John and I, I don't care about this at all, you know? So John and I are watching and we got to game 162 and the Red Sox are, who are the Red Sox playing? It doesn't even really matter. We're playing in Baltimore. Yeah. In Baltimore. So we were watching that game and the, the issue was either the Red Sox had to win and then nothing mattered. Or if the Red Sox lost, then the, you know, Yankees had to beat the Rays. So we were watching the Red Sox game and the Red Sox lost. So John is like, Oh, damn it. It's okay. We were checking the scores of the Yankees game. It was tied. So he's already high blood pressure. So we turned on, you know, this is before like we had like MLB TV or anything, I think. So I'm pretty sure we just like went on Reddit or something and found a pirated uh, link to watch yeah. the end of the Yankees race game. And we put it on and like literally five minutes later, Evan Longoria hits the walk off home run. And yeah. th I've never seen so much sadness, just pure sadness. I don't think John talked for like three days. <laughs> it's unbelievable how so many things can go wrong at the same time. Cause the Rays like, or no, the Yankees also blew like a seven run lead. Mm -hmm. The one time I have to cheer for the Yankees. I like 
kind of cave in and just be like, come on, just, just beat them. And like, just, I felt like even cheering for them that much curse that, you know, that day from then on. You well, should have still been cheering for them to lose. Exactly. If you just stick to your roots, I think better things happen, but. <laughs> John, I, I have a um, little sympathy for you because of 04, 07, 13. Oh yeah. 18. You can suck on it a little bit in 2011. Oh, no, exactly. Like, that was, that was a just guy from crazy. Cleveland, Ohio. Like, yeah. <laughs> sorry. I'm not, you know. Oh, yeah. No, I definitely grew up in the golden era of Red Sox years. I feel for my dad, who was a Red Sox fan during the leaner years. So, no, I definitely felt spoiled from even 2003 on when the Red Sox were, you know, the sort of unbeatable juggernaut that they, you know, at most times where they'd have their off seasons, but you know, they were finally always the, one of the top two or three teams in baseball. Yeah. And they're a good start this year. Obviously I did. Yeah. I didn't, I knew that their record was good. I didn't look, I just looked at their individual stats earlier. I did not know like JD Martinez in 351 with nine homers. I had no mm-hmm. idea. I feel like that should be, I should know that especially because it's the Red Sox and I watch, you know, MLB network every day and look at all the scores and everything. I feel like I should have noticed that. I mean, they're just the most, I wouldn't say unexciting team in baseball, but the most professional team in baseball. Like, I don't think J.D. Martinez, Xander Bogarts, Devers, maybe Verdugo, they don't give any real spice or pizzazz to the game in comparison to like, you know, baseball shuts down everybody's throat to tease and bets and all that stuff. But right. the big three in Boston. Are all Verdugo's just- got a little bit of swag to him. Oh yeah. goes, he, he, yeah, he definitely makes up for it. For well, he was he was in L.A. first. That's true. You know, he brought the L.A. ness over. Um, yeah. But Eovaldi's finally doing what Eovaldi should always do. Mm-hmm. I don't. I have no idea how he ever gets hit. It makes no sense to me. Yeah. Um. But I mean, they're 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 just playing like oh, their whole team is doing it. The bullpen's solid. The rotation's doing well. Obviously, they're hitting well. I mean, that's that's how you start. What seventeen and ten or whatever they are they are right mm-hmm. now. Yeah. But no, I think it's a lot to do with Coro for sure. I mean, say what you will about the whole Houston fiasco. Fiasco is putting it lightly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the whole uh, Houston slight against the game of baseball. But I mean, yeah, Cora served his year, the Red Sox. And I'm sure the, the pandemic in a shortened season had a lot to do with it. But very, looking very on Red Sox-like. And now with Cora back, I don't know. That, that's the biggest difference I can see. You know, the, the, listen, the guy can manage whatever happened, happened. The guy has a connection with players and he understands the game. Great. So, so we get it now. It's interesting. Steven told me your dad was a beat writer in LA. Yeah. He worked for the, um, times for gosh, 10 years, maybe covering pretty much any sport he could in LA. I mean, he was on the sports page. So what, what is his best story that he has told you? I uh, even brought this up. So I had to call my dad because I don't remember his stories as well as he does, obviously. And he pretty much said 99% of all the stories he has are un can't be told in any form of public media, which I can <laughs> being in the Dodgers locker room. I'm sure he has seen and heard some things that just can't be <laughs> uttered on any form of radio or television. So I'll take it. <laughs> that Great. i wasn't gonna dive any deeper <laughs> i mean he is he is a reporter so i mean that's yeah. see that's that's like the kind of good reporter that we don't really you don't see as much anymore because they used to develop like great relationships with totally. players and stuff yeah. um because like i'm sure your dad would like go hang out and drink with some guys right yeah i mean just i suppose living in la and covering i mean he covered lakers games too said he saw uh jack, jack nicholson doing coke in the bathroom or something like that so i mean thems were the times thems was los angeles <laughs> he was in hollywood dealing with hollywood people at times but um no essentially any story that starts with time Lasorda, he said can't be spoken of which i can absolutely believe <laughs> yeah 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 uh that, well i mean that's fair i mean i, I feel like i had to ask you know i don't know yeah, if there's I mean, if, if there's a uh what's what's the term for that like if it runs out of its meaning anymore but i guess all those guys are still alive and around and hanging out so as i know i mean the the one he said is for proper company was 
Of course, I got the name CRM. Pedro Guerrero. Pedro Guerrero. Yeah, Pedro. Oh, yeah, Pedro Guerrero. Yeah, when he was on the the Dodgers. Um, my dad was talking to somebody. I can't quite remember the name. Who was sitting out due to quote unquote general fatigue? You have to release, you know, why a player right. was sitting out that day. And apparently, Pedro took exception to this and started <laughs> referring to this guy exclusively as the general from then on. <laughs> so. <laughs> Pedro would walk by this guy and say, oh, is, is the general going to join us today? <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. Uh, but it's, it's good. Yeah. I mean, he covered everything from baseball to boxing. All of his favorite stories are boxing. Yeah. I mean, we did. Hey, that's a good, good segue. Oh, yeah. Uh, so last thing with John here is that when we were in college, we did. Uh, I had an English project. Uh, f- this was basically a book report, um, but I asked my professor if he'd be okay with us basically making a movie that was based on the plot of the book that we read. And um, so we took this snow falling on cedars, we took it and then we put it into our own movie called Rocky Road. And this is John playing the Canadian and me playing the main character. And this is round two of our boxing match. Um, and John did actually chug real maple syrup for the making of this film, by the way. Oh, you're yeah. kidding me. Yeah. No, I, mean, I think I think I insisted upon it. Yeah, he wanted the realism because he's yeah. disgusting. Fight was totally choreographed by us. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I was well, pretty proud of it. I love all the sound effects that are in there, guys. I think it really added a nice touch when you guys got within about a foot of each other on the swinging. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it was we we tried to make it corny and cheesy while with just enough goodness, you yeah. know. It was the perfect mix for a college English because the rest of the movie, the dialogue is is corny. I mean, it could not be any cornier. And but, once yeah. again, that was the point. <laughs> and yeah, maybe I mean, I'm just a terrible writer. Who knows? Yeah, a little column A, a little column B. But like that was another thing we just always got along with was combat sports for whatever reason. I mean, in your free time, you did Krav Maga and Muay Thai, and you always found some kind of martial art to yeah. stay. And I boxed because uh, I was always loved boxing growing up, especially with my dad. So I remember in the, the Regis gym once, there's like boxing equipment out because um, one of the guys there does like boxing instruction in classes, but they just like leave their stuff out in the gym. So like we had some space that wasn't a huge gym, but not a lot of people were in it. So like, oh, let's throw in some guys. Let's just spar a little bit, have some fun. I remember like we said it like a three minute timer on the phone, like went at it. It was like, all right, we'll take it easy. Like 50%, like we're not trying to hurt each other. But then it's just like, it's tough. I mean, somebody like Steve snaps a jab in your face. You're like, okay, I guess we're in a fight now. Like I'm not going to back down. <laughs> hey, Steve, quit hitting so hard. Like, right now I have to hit him hard. And then it turned into, yeah, we got in literal sparring fight for three minutes and like once the bell finally chimed on the phone we both just stopped it's like what are we doing <laughs> why did we do why? this what happened <laughs> i get it though man i get boxing it's terrifying i i love boxing as like a workout it's incredible shoulder workout all that stuff but dude the guys that go in there and just wear punches in the face are crazy like john sends me you know videos from old boxing when apparently they used to never guard apparently that wasn't a thing that people yeah. did when uh, marvin Hagler died i sent you his fight with um i mean hearns yeah exactly that first round the so, best yeah. round of boxing ever yeah pretty amazing yeah because nobody blocked anything it was the best round of boxing ever because they were just throwing haymakers at each Perfect. other or just like yeah. who's gonna who's gonna fall first no yeah. i mean those two guys in particular were just never gonna back down from anybody and so, of course, they had to fight in that first round. They both made it a point to not back down. So it turned into yeah, the greatest round of boxing in history. That's awesome. Um, a couple things before we go. Yeah. Steven has no idea what you do for a living. Yeah. What do you do? Oh, I'm a, <laughs> a sales rep for a brewery out here. Oh, perfect. Yeah, tobacco, tobacco Wood Brewing Company, shout out. Free advertising. Right. We'll, we'll, be, we'll be hitting you up on <laughs> yeah. that stuff. Yeah, to all of our viewers in the roundabout Raleigh area, that's about all we're, <laughs> all we're distributing to. <laughs> I like uh, that. Yeah, I mean, I figured he was working in beer. This is what he does, but I just wasn't sure. You know, I, I don't want to say something and then just be completely wrong. No, yeah, right? I don't know. 
Uh, should we have him spin the wheel of moderately interesting things, Stephen? Yes. Yes, we oh. should. Oh, yeah. Wow. Oh, absolutely. This is what we do. This is what do you we have do. it with you? I, I didn't travel it with me, but <laughs> it does make an appearance, oddly enough. It's got it's a really great spin. sound to it, yeah. It does. I think that says E-tail on it. E-tail. Yeah. yeah, so E-tail. What is the last thing that you purchased, John, on the internet? Oh. <laughs> um, I, I'm trying to keep a better hold on my Amazon purchases. The last one was <laughs> uh, baseball stirrups for my men's league team. Where the <laughs> you are Chatham kidding Bulls. me? Yeah, where the Chatham Bulls. Somebody brought up the idea of stirrups, and I'm like, all right, I'm, I'm already on it. Like ten bucks. Yeah, easy purchase. <laughs> Again. They got the great three horizontal stripes on them. I mean, I'm going to to really look good as I flounder out there again. Perfect. I never realized how hard, I never realized how hard baseball was. I was never sore after baseball just because I grew up. I was in baseball condition my whole life, but not playing for four years and then playing nine innings, like my entire body was shut down for two days. <laughs> just like, that was my whole body sore just from baseball, standing around. Steve, yeah, but what, a lot of standing around. What was the last thing you purchased? Uh, I actually, yesterday, my mom and I both bought AirPods because um, I, I got a pair when they first came out and the battery life has dwindled down to about eight minutes. Mm. So um, they're actually the only headphones I can wear while working out. Nothing else sticks in, like stays in my ears. I got weird shaped ears. So oh, I had to get a new pair. So that's actually very fresh. And my mom got a pair too, because you know she wanted some AirPods. So you should have your uh, have your agent reach out to Evaldi's agent because he's got a very similar situation to you. What, what do you mean? Headphones? Yeah, you know, no, you guys both have the oh. the big old <laughs> you mean these? Yeah. <laughs> Those suckers. The satellite Come out dishes. The side real nice. Yeah. yeah. I can hear a lot. So, I can almost fly. So if you're uh if anybody is trying to order today either earbuds or um stirrups for a men's baseball league and they're out of stock you know who to blame <laughs> you know why <laughs> John, well, thank it, you for coming yes it was yeah. great getting to know you dude yeah of course i'm happy my uh, internet was able to cut out at the best parts <laughs> yeah seriously that's i wonder if rob's gonna fix it and we're just gonna have uh times of silence or i wonder how he's gonna do it i'm curious yeah. i'm curious yeah. to see what he does I'm see how it works too well tune in to find out yeah Ooh. John, good luck in the men's league. I'll I'll draft you high in the uh, men's stirrup league. I'm the Shohei Otani of my team. Bravo. <laughs> I, Bravo. I the last time I pitched, I don't know how you strike somebody out, especially like a big name, and not like immediately just start pounding your chest. Because I never pitched in my life, and I'm like blowing doors down out here, and I've just never felt more confident or better in myself ever, ever before. <laughs> oh my god, it's an addiction <laughs> striking somebody out. So. I can definitely it see. is. It is. All right. John Deuces. Peace, brother. Double Deuces. Thanks for coming, bud. Talk yeah, to you soon. Bye. Yeah. Bye. See, that's not a thing I do on my own. The bye is a, that's a, that's a friend thing. I, I don't know. know why. I know. It's nice that you guys are that close. It's good. He's a good dude. Yeah, he's a really good dude. We, uh, we do, we text a lot, um, you know, we're guys, so we don't like to talk on the phone all the time or anything. But uh, when we do, you know, we always have a good time. And it's it's a lot of it's a lot of sarcasm, obviously. Yeah, totally. a lot of talking shit because it's it's fun that way. Well, you know, it's funny because I like to FaceTime people now and none of my guy friends will answer my FaceTime. They just won't do it. They're like, you want to talk? It's like, no, I want to see you. You know, like. I miss you. I don't. Uh, yes. I, you know, I, I think FaceTime, I'm slow on the uptake. I still don't FaceTime that often. I do FaceTime more than I used to, mm -hmm. but I don't know, man. It's, I, I get it's, it's not really like, I want to be able to like, you know, put my phone on speaker or have my headphones in or whatever. And uh, like, you know, be, you know, sitting outside or something. And I don't know. It just feels like FaceTime. You have to be like, but I guess that's the point is to actually be engaged in the conversation. So maybe I'm just a bad person. I don't know. No, it doesn't make you a bad person. I um, I FaceTimed Millar for two hours the other day. Oh, my gosh. 
for two hours. We hadn't caught up in a while. And because uh, he just purchased a ranch about an hour oh, from his wow. home. And so he's been spending every waking hour. You okay? You almost hit yourself in the face with the lights. I hit the microphone on my headphone oh. and it was really loud. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. So it was good. It was good. I, I enjoyed doing that. Two hours we caught up. Nice. Yeah, dude, that's awesome. I mean, I, I yeah, I, I get it. I, I try to do it more. I do because now I FaceTime with like my nieces and nephews. So that makes it a lot more, you know, Good. you got to see them. Yes, yeah, so that's cute because you'll you, you miss the stages if you don't. Um, exactly. So before we go, let's check in on your your homework assignment. Uh, your last homework assignment was to find the hot spot, not like warm temperature wise, but the place to go in Bradenton, Florida. Let's see how you did. What the hell was that? <laughs> uh, that is uh, a brewery near where I live in beautiful Bradenton, Florida, uh, where the average age is 58 and a half. And uh, that was a German traditional band playing on a like a Thursday afternoon uh, with a schnitzel truck out front. And uh, like I said, I was probably the only person below, you know, 50 there and sat out on the lawn had a beer listened to some german music the whole thing was in german i had no idea what was going on but we did get to yell who the hell is alice so that was fun that would, and that's that's as good as bradenton gets so you could have gotten up there and s sang the old song 99 luft balloons 99 luft balloons i don't know any of the other words they see, there's the, the english version though yeah yeah see you know the english version yeah that's not that's not the real German version. They would, no. they would probably hate me for that. By the way, that's your next homework assignment. No, it's not. Oh no. I'm kidding. <laughs> Sing 99 loose balloons in the original German perfectly. <laughs> Do you think you could pull that off? In two weeks, probably. Yeah. But I really I really don't want to because that because more so is that that's gonna take um way it's gonna be three horrible minutes of that other people are going to have to listen to. Um, I'm pretty good at learning, memorizing lyrics and stuff. Cause I had to do it a lot in college, like pretty quick. So if there's, a, I have a whole process to it and it involves a lot of writing because that helps me uh, stick it in my memory. So I hand write the lyrics like 30 times and then it's usually pretty in, in there. Pretty good. You serious? That's how you memorize. I always was curious how they do it on idol or anything else where they have to learn a song where you, you don't know all the words. So you write them, you actually write them down. Yeah. In college, I had times where I had to, you know, people would ask me to perform with them, like in their concerts, like mm -hmm. do a duet. Um, and I'd only have like a day or two with, you know, to learn a song I had never heard before. And so basically the way it would work is I would have the lyrics I would have the song on repeat. So I was learning the, the melody in my head while I'm writing the lyrics down. Got it. Oh, and I could, you know, I can probably memorize a song now and like a full song, probably about a, you know, a day, eight hours. Nice. Um, but it's hard. Like, it's weird to think about because it, it doesn't seem like it'd be that much. But if a song you've never heard before, especially because a lot of the songs are in foreign languages. And at that point, I'm just learning. I'm just learning the, the, consonants they are the sorry the syllables and just kind of putting those together in a random order and mm. um yeah i mean it's 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 weird but i i enjoy it you write your own music uh i have before uh, honestly my lyrics always come out super corny <sighs> so i found i yeah they, like me writing try to write a serious like love song and stuff it, it always comes out as the same rhymes that every other pop star uses and i hate it so much mm -hmm. um so oh god you always hear the same rhymes and songs and, yeah. and i just know i'm not it's not my talent so i i actually have written some pretty good uh funny songs though so um those are like it was a few years ago, but I've, I've been thinking about getting back into it. I wrote it for a, a Christmas show one year in college. I wrote a song about how lonely the Yeti is on Christmas. <laughs> it was pretty good. I thought it was pretty solid. That makes me laugh. Um, so your homework assignment this time is you mentioned you go to the beach occasionally. Do you still? I do. Oh, yeah. I think you have to video a day at the beach and kind of take us through what, what you do. 
Okay. Yeah, I can do that. I mean, I, it's not that exciting, you, you can know, make it exciting. I can make it exciting. I also, there's like a 90% chance I'm going to destroy my phone doing this because I do go in the water. So that's going to be oh, dangerous. I don't want you. So to, if you never, we don't have a big enough budget to replace again, your phone. I'll just get, I'll put it in a Ziploc bag. That's what people do. Right. And then just in case it falls, like it's okay. Oh, I didn't think of that, but that's pretty good. You've never seen that people well, I, put their phones in Ziploc bags. Yes, I have seen it, but I just didn't, it didn't come to mind. Cause I just, I'm old and whatever. Thinker. Yeah. All right. Well, listen, uh, go get healthier. It was great meeting your buddy, John. He is a funny guy. He is. A, we have to get him a new internet, but he's a funny dude. Yeah, yeah I agree. And I, I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed it. I'm, I think he had a great time. So um, it was it was really fun. And thank you for having me once again. This is um, something always to look forward to. And I hope people look forward to listening to it. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we'll give you a couple weeks breather and then we'll circle back again and check in and make sure you're getting healthier and stronger and go go spend a great day at the beach man i can't wait to see it all right sounds good, sounds good. thanks right. chris we'll see everybody next time here on the chris rose rotation a production of john boy media and a shout out to our buddy robbie Shirocco, the guy who puts it all together see you next time bye